Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting Blender tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, that turned out a little bit more intense than I expected. But in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to destroy stuff in Blender. Now this is going to be an intermediate level tutorial and if that throws you off, the tutorial is Destruction for Beginners, not Blender for Beginners. And if you're new to Blender, I've got a full beginner tutorial series that I'm going to link you down below. So be sure to check that out first before you come back here. But now, enough destruction, let's jump into the tutorial. I don't care. Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I have a brand new scene here and I already have a cube that we're going to destroy. Let me just move it up so it sits on this ground plane here. For that, with the cube selected, press G to grab it, Z to lock the movement to the Z axis, Shift and Tap to enable snapping, and let me just move it up just a little bit so it sits exactly on that ground plane. Press Shift and A to add a new object. I'm going to select Mesh and Plane. So that's going to add a little bit of a ground plane. With that plane selected, press S to scale it. And you can do that manually or just type 10 on your keyboard. That's going to scale it up 10 times and hit enter to confirm. And so now we have a ground plane that all of the pieces of our cube can fall onto. But we now need to break up this cube. We essentially need to pre-fracture it to define for Blender how many pieces and what type of pieces we want this cube to break up in. For that, we're going to use an add-on called Cell Fracture. And don't worry, it's free and included in Blender already. You just have to enable it. So simply come into Edit, Preferences, and then in your Preferences, come into the Add-ons tab. And up in the search bar, simply search for Cell. It's going to bring you up the Cell Fracture object. Right now it's disabled, so enable this add-on and then close your preferences again. So now it's enabled. And we could now simply break this cube, but I want to break this cube up in a specific way. What I'm going to create is I'm going to create a sphere that's going to fly in from the side and hit this cube on that corner. So I want this corner to shatter more. And for that, you can actually use the annotate tool in Blender to draw onto your object how you want it to break apart. And this gives you a lot of control over how you want windows to break or objects to shatter or things to explode. It's really awesome and it's super easy. In order to do that, we're going to use the annotate tool in Blender. You'll find that in your 3D view on the left hand side. If you go a little bit down, there's the annotate tool. And there's actually just a pencil tool essentially that allows you to click and draw in your 3D view anywhere you want. And that creates these 3D annotations in your view. Now let me undo that. I actually now want to draw on this cube itself. I don't just want to draw somewhere in 3D space. I want to draw on the surface. And what you can do is at the top of your 3D view with the annotate tool selected, you find some options for the annotate tool. Placement right now is set to 3D cursor. Let's change that over to surface. And because I don't want to accidentally draw on the ground plane, I'm going to hide the visibility of that. And I can now draw and annotate and the annotations are going to stick to the surface of my objects in the scene, which is really cool. So now I can actually draw cracks coming out from this corner here and spreading over the rest of the cube and kind of really scriggle this up, zoom in a little bit. And just really make it messy on this corner here because I really want this corner to shatter the most. And I'm going to just draw a few lines kind of towards the back as well that kind of wrap around the side of the cube just so that there's a bit of fragmentation happening as well. And it looks a little bit messy, but that should do. It's kind of, I want most of the fragments to really come from this corner here where I want that sphere to hit the cube. That should do just fine. So let's bring up the cell fracture add-on. For that, press F3 to bring up the search and search for cell fracture. There's only one entry in here. Let's click that. And that's going to open up the cell fracture panel. Now there are tons of options in here that I'm not going to go through in detail. All you need to do is make sure your cube is selected, otherwise it's not going to break anything at all. For the point source, I'm actually going to change this over to the annotation pencil. So that's going to use our annotation marks on this object to determine how to break it up. Source limit, I'm going to set this to 150. That's the amount of particles and points and pieces that this cube is going to be broken into. If you ramp this up, you'll get more pieces, but computations will take longer and physics will run slower. Recursive shatter by default is set to zero and I'm going to set this to one that allows this add-on to break pieces that it has already broken. So it's like a re-breaking of pieces. It adds a bit more detail, again, creates a few more pieces and makes it a bit slower, but I think it'll just look a little bit nicer. I'm going to leave the rest as is. 
All I'm going to change is under scene for collection, I'm actually going to create a new collection called fragments. So all of the pieces that this add-on generates get placed in this collection. Otherwise they just get dumped in my root scene collection and it gets a bit messy. So with all of that set up, let's hit okay and let's let this add-on do its thing. After a few seconds, our cube has been broken up. We have a new collection in our scene called fragments that contains all of the pieces. And if you rotate around the object, you'll see this weird flickering. And that's just caused by the fact that the default cube that we started out with is still in our scene. So let me hide the visibility on that. So now you can see the pieces, but we still have this annotation and you can delete that either up here under the settings for the annotation tool with this node select, you can just press minus. You can also press N to bring up the properties panel, come into the view and under here you'll find all of your annotations in the scene. Again, you can hide them from here or you can just delete them. It's going to delete it. Press N to hide that panel again and return to the selection tool. Let's unselect and here you can see how the cube has now been broken up. And you can see that it's broken up much more where I've drawn all of my scribbles on. So it's really shattered in this corner here and then the rest is kind of bigger pieces which looks really cool. So let me unhide my ground plane again and expand the timeline at the bottom of my 3D view. If I now press space to play this back, absolutely nothing happens because we haven't yet added physics. So let's do that next. First off though, let's reselect the cube. I'm also going to show the visibility of it again. And let's bring up the properties panel. And one important thing, if I come back to the item tab to note is the scale. This cube here that we've shattered apart is two meters by two meters by two meters. And the reason this is important is because if you're dealing with physics, physics are based on the size of the object. An object that's 200 meters in size is going to visibly fall slower than something that's just two meters or 20 centimeters or two nanometers, right? So just be aware that this is two meters by two meters, which is actually fairly big. So just be aware of the scale whenever you're dealing with physics. Let's hide the panel again and let's hide the cube again. And let's select any of the pieces of this cube that we want to apply physics to. Over on the right hand side, let's come into the physics tab and let's add a rigid body to it. I'm going to leave most things on default type active because we want this to actually move. Mass we'll deal with in just a minute. Collision I'm going to leave on the default, but I'm going to expand the surface response. I'm going to give these pieces a little bit more friction because I want them to not slide around too much. I'm kind of imagining this being more like cement or brick or something like that. So I'm going to jack the friction up to somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8. And if you now play this back, you will have this one single piece animated. It just drops through the floor and none of the other pieces move because this is the only object now seen that we've have defined physics for so far. And with this object still selected, you can see this really bright orange highlight. And I want to select all of the other pieces of this cube as well. The easiest way to do that, because we've moved all of our fragments into a collection in the outliner, simply right click onto the fragments collection and choose to select objects. It's going to select all of the other ones, but, and I hope you can see that the piece we had selected, which is our active selection is still highlighted in orange. So this is still the piece that has physics on it, but all of the other ones are selected as well. And with this particular selection, I can now come into object, rigid body and copy from active. That is going to copy the physics settings from my current active selection, which is that bright orange piece to all of the other ones. So let's select that. And now if you select any of the other pieces in this cube, they should all have the same physics settings and that looks fine to me. Let's select the ground plane as well. And again, over on the right hand side in the properties panel, let's add rigid body to this plane as well. The type here, I'm going to change from active to passive because I don't want the ground plane to move. I just want it to sit there and do nothing at all. But I'm also going to increase the friction just a little bit to maybe 0.7 because again, I don't want things to slide around like it's all glass and ice. So let's zoom out a little bit. Rewind and let's play this back and just see what happens. That is pretty cool so far. You can see that all of the little pieces here kind of trickle down and then the rest kind of crumbles apart really nicely. Now, one thing that happened when we copied those physics properties from our piece to all of the other ones is that all of these pieces right now have the same mass. They have the same weight, which isn't realistic because bigger pieces usually have more weight. And these small ones here should be much lighter. And so therefore the physics would affect them differently. Now you could go through every single one of them and adjust the mass, but that would drive you a little bit insane. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my fragments collection in the outliner, select all of these pieces, and I can now get Blender to just calculate the mass based on the volume in my 3D scene. 
For that, with all of these objects selected, come into Object, Rigid Body, and there's an option here to say Calculate Mass. Let's select that. And Blender will give you the option of choosing what type of object you're dealing with. And this is really cool. You can make it wood, glass, gold, different things. But I'm going to choose Brick Compressed. Feel free to pick whatever you want to. That just determines how the mass will be calculated. And this piece here is now 113 kilos. The smaller ones, 87. And the smaller I select, you can see that the mass gets lighter. So these ones here is 0.2 kilograms in weight. Some of the bigger ones are like 400 kilos. And now if you rewind and play this back, this acts a little bit more realistic because the bigger pieces are actually heavier. The bigger pieces will be harder to move also in impact. You'll see that the small pieces will fly off much, much quicker. Now, the next thing we need to do is I actually want a sphere to destroy this cube. I don't want the cube to just crumble right off the bat. For that, let's come back with any of the pieces in our cube selected. Come back into the physics settings and let's come all the way down and expand this dynamics option. Let's move further down and in here you'll find an option for deactivation which controls when these elements are being added and removed from the physics simulation and actually be animated. So let's enable deactivation, expand this and in here you'll find another option that says start deactivated and I want all of my pieces to start deactivated. So let's select that and you can control what force is required to activate the object and what force is required to keep them alive before they deactivate again. I'm going to leave all of that on default. But again, remember, we only changed the physics property for that one selected object. So again, in our scene collection, right click fragments and select all objects, come into object, rigid body, copy from active. But because the active object we had selected had a mass of 410 kilograms, now all of the other ones will also have that same mass and we need to recalculate the mass so they all still have their individual weights to them. So with everything still selected, object, rigid body, calculate mass, and again, I'm going to select brick pressed. So now all of our pieces will start deactivated and they all still have their individual mass. If you now rewind and play this back, nothing happens and that's exactly what we want. We want this to start out with no destruction at all and we're now going to use a sphere to smash in and destroy our cube. For that, let's press Shift and A, add a new mesh and I'm going to add a UV sphere, G and Z to move it up a little bit. I'm also going to disable snapping and scale this cube down just a little bit, maybe, maybe about that size, maybe a little bit smaller. G and Y and let's just move this kind of to the corner here. I'm going to move the sphere to exactly where I want it to smash into the cube, which is right here. So move this over just a little bit. So I'm going to animate the sphere to kind of come flying in from the side and then hit the cube on just that corner. Maybe I'll just move it over and move it down just a little bit. So we just get a little bit more of an impact. And now with my time at frame one, let's just move this sphere over to the right hand side to somewhere off screen or off camera or however how you want to move it. Come into the object properties right click onto the location to insert the keyframe. Let's come forward to maybe frame 20. Totally up to you and how fast you want this sphere to move. G and X and let's just move this sphere all the way over to behind that cube so we'd have to pass right through it. Right click, insert a keyframe. So now we've animated the sphere to kind of travel through that cube. And if you played this back, nothing would happen because the sphere right now doesn't have any physics. So with the sphere selected, let's come into the physics properties Add a rigid body. Let's come down a little bit. And here it's important that you enable animated because we actually added keyframes to the sphere. If you don't do this, then the sphere will just drop down because it'll just be taken over by the physics simulation in Blender. But if you tell Blender this is animated, means the keyframes will control the movement, not the physics. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool. Now that looks pretty good, but you may notice that the physics it doesn't quite work, right? It looked like the sphere passed through these pieces here and then starts smashing into the ones at the back. It's only here when the collision happens. And this is due to the time step detail of the physics simulation. If I go a single frame back, well, the sphere is here. One frame in, it's already past these little pieces here. So Blender hasn't picked up that it's actually touching all of those pieces because it kind of looks like the sphere is teleporting each step. But we can make the physics simulation more accurate quite easily. For that, let's come into the scene settings, expand the settings for the rigid body world, which is essentially the physics simulation that you have within your 3D scene. And down here, you'll find steps per second, which is 
per second of animation, how many steps, how many in-betweens will Blender calculate? Right now, this is set to 60. You can jack this up pretty high. I'm going to go 200, which is pretty detailed. It's pretty intense, but also the sphere is moving pretty fast and I want to capture all that in between. It will make the physics simulation slower, but it'll just make it more accurate. Okay, quick intermission. Changing these settings does nothing to fix the sphere collision at this point. And I didn't realize that until after I recorded the tutorial. The reason for this is that the sphere is still keyframed and this setting, steps per second, will only affect objects that are controlled by the actual physics simulation. But because we are going to release the sphere from the keyframe animation into the physics simulation in just a minute, this is still going to help make the collision more accurate. So I'm just going to roll with it. But now back to your usual program. Solve the iterations. I'm also going to jack up to 20 just to give the calculations themselves a little bit more detail. And just again, it adds a little bit to the simulation and makes it slower. But you know, if you trade one in for the other, let's rewind and play this back and just see what happens. Cool, that looks a little bit better already. I'm still finding that the sphere is still kind of passing through those objects right there. And I think what I actually want to do is I don't want the sphere to be an unstoppable force. I kind of want it to actually impact with this cube right there rather than just passing through. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to animate it up until here and then release it into the physics simulation. And the physics simulation is going to pick up that velocity from the keyframes. And then the cube is just going to respond to this cube a little bit more realistically. For that, let's come back a few frames from the impact. So that's the impact. Let's go one frame back. Maybe let's go two frames back with the sphere selected, come into the physics setting. And I want to now keyframe this animated property. Here at this frame, I still want it to be animated. So let's right click and insert the keyframe. Let's go forward one frame. And don't worry that everything looks messy. I think the caging is a little bit messed up right there. Let's untick the animated property for the sphere. Right click and insert a keyframe. So now at this point here, the sphere is going to be let go. And it's actually going to just respond to the physics in the scene. So let's rewind and play this back. Cool, and now the sphere is actually impacting with that cube and is bouncing off. Now it doesn't do much damage right now, but that's also because the mass, the weight of this piece is only one kilo. So let's just jack this up to maybe 100. Let's rewind, let's position the camera a little bit better so we can see this and let's play this back. Cool, that's not bad. I still find that it doesn't have enough power. And one of the easy things you can do, you can actually just tweak these keyframes here. So let's just kind of bring this last keyframe in a little bit so the sphere will move with a little bit more force. But I want to make sure that I release it into the physics simulation before it reaches the cube. So at this point here, let's release it into the simulation. Let's rewind and play this back. Ah, still not finding it powerful enough. So maybe I'll give it a mass of a thousand. And let's try that again. Yep, that's a little bit better. And again, let's just keep tweaking these keyframes a little bit make this sphere even faster and release it just a little bit quicker into the simulation. So maybe at that point and just give that a try. Cool. And there you go. That looks a whole lot nicer. Let's rewind, zoom in a little bit and let's check this out in all of its gory detail. And there you go. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with destructions in Blender. From here, you'd add some materials, you add set up the scene, some lighting and render this out and you can get some really cool effects. Don't forget to enable motion blur for all of the little bits and pieces flying off. And I've covered those things in other tutorials already that I'm going to link you down below. But hopefully this gave you a first view at what you can do with destruction and physics in Blender and hope you'll have some fun with it. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.